Hello friends and welcome to this video. Today I'm doing a book review on uh, Leaving the Trap. It's how to exit re the reincarnation cycle. The author is Isabella A. Green. Uh, it's green with uh, E on the end. And uh, a fantastic woman. I've recently been introduced to her uh, in, in the world of like uh, quantum travel, astral projection, breath work. Um, a little bit about her, I believe that she had a bit of a troubled past in like the rock scene and and taking certain um, drugs, psychedelic stuff and she just had a number of like, you know, deep experiences and she'd always been interested in like spirituality and stuff as a young child and like, like yoga and meditation but never really pursued things until she had, I guess, some awakenings back in her very busy party life, as she calls it. Um, I'm currently part of a group on Facebook, and it's an amazing group, people sharing stuff in there about exiting reincarnation. Now, I first got introduced to this uh, by um, my girlfriend, who's an amazing singer and creator, and she's such, such a lovely, wise woman, you know, very powerful, and she's got herself really put together, and she had some experiences herself many years ago and she spoke to me about these experiences and I also spoke to her about some of my experiences too beyond the physical and at a very early age I must have been about two or three years old and I'm remembering this really dark sort of tunnel area in physical reality and I was experiencing this trauma and everything I didn't know and understand what was going on and for years that those dream world experiences um, well, it wasn't so much dream world. I was in, I was dreaming, I was in this state, but I didn't really understand what it, what it was. Now, Robert Monroe, if you don't know who he is, he's um, a researcher, a pioneer in brainwave entrainment. He's the one that patented, patented um, hemisync, which is sort for hemispheric synchronization, which is the, the hemispheres of your brain synchronized together and listening to um, audio tones putting frequencies in either side of the ear to induce astral projection out of body experiences. But that wasn't his um, original um, plan. It was to educate people while they are asleep and to get better sleep, but people were falling asleep. And he was having these profound um, experiences that were very physical, very vivid, and he was very much aware and awake. And through, he wrote three books. Uh, Journeys Out of the Body, Far Journeys, and Ultimate Journey, and one of his uh, three books, not Journeys Out of the Body, one of the other two books, he wrote about something called the Louche, which is um, certain energy, energetic beings feeding upon our consciousness, on our fear state. And when you understand about this, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, like, whatever I'm researching at the moment, whatever I'm experiencing myself, it just sometimes just makes sense. Like you can't make this up, but when you understand about exiting the reincarnation cycle, <laughs> now you might think straight away is that to do with ascension or whatever. Perhaps you know there is no ascension as such. It's just we we come to our complete selves. As I was having a, a deep conversation with my father the other day about, I didn't think he believed in reincarnation, and I asked him, and he says, well, I believe that aspects of us are in parts, you know, in the past and the future all the time and we are just ex experiencing a part of ourselves in this physical reality. I was like, so you do believe in reincarnation? He's like, yeah, but people got it wrong. So I very much believe what he, he's going through, but I believe that one part of you can focus on that current state and bring all parts of you together. And also Robert Monroe spoke about this in one of his, part, in one of his books that, um, there was this long convey about of people, like this queue, uh, waiting to go through this portal to, like, I guess, ascend, as you, if you like, or go to the next stage of learning or whatever. And someone, a spirit stopped him and said, well, you know, you haven't got all your parts. So he had to come back. And I guess that's what it's about. But in this book, I'll read uh, one small chapter. It's not a very long book. It's uh, 119, 120 pages. 120 pages. It's very, it's very short, um, but it's, it's beautiful in that way because it has these short stories and they're about a couple of pages long. So I'll read uh, a chapter to you shortly. But um, I'm really glad I've been introduced to this lovely woman. Um, 
Now for me, when I first started doing meditation many years ago, I was guided and uh, my first out of body experience was in my teens. It was very vivid. Uh, I didn't really understand what was going on, but I felt guided to sit down, uh, sit up on the floor. I had a PlayStation at the time. I put this lovely relaxing CD in there and um, I did some breath work. I didn't know why, what I was doing. I was just bringing this energy up to the top of my head and then back down again with the breath. And then after a short while, I started feeling a bit weird, like I haven't experienced this feeling before. Vibrations in my body, my eyes were like physically vibrating, my whole body was vibrating. I thought I'd better lay down and let this feeling go away. And then I had an out of body experience. And before that, I, with my eyes closed, I could see see my hand in front of me. It was like blue and glowing and I thought this is this is weird. I don't understand what's going on. You know, being 16, 17 years old at the time, 16 and a half years old, it's like, what is this? You, you know, I had no teachers for many years. Uh, I had to learn things on my own. Eventually teachers uh, came into my life and the ones that I needed, I guess, to learn and take what was truth for me. Um, so anyway, yeah, going back to the book, uh, it's an amazing book. You can find it on Amazon, of all places, obviously. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's expanded a bit of my awareness what's going on. So if those of you who are awake out there who understand about our governments taking control and, you know, having some sort of fear with us, then I, I see it as whatever is above is below in this system, in this planetary system that we're in on Earth. We are experiencing this, this fear and trauma and you think, why do governments allow us to go through this pain and suffering? And it's possibly because certain beings, um, which Isabella calls the handlers, I, I believe, um, they keep you in this trap because these sort of beings, these entities are feeding upon our fear. And it's like, that's makes sense in some way but also the reincarnation cycle is that they want to keep these souls here so for example we all heard about like near-death experiences and when people pass over you see the white light and the white light is really it's a destination it's a tunnel into there's another like another room back there there's another world beyond that because you're passing through this separation from physical reality into the non-physical world and um so she explains that there are sometimes two different tunnels that people can be uh, presented with like a blue energy and a white energy and it's basically what she's saying in short is don't go into those tunnels be a completely sovereign free being a spirit that you don't have to come back to the system and um, as much as we we love this world in some aspects this is our home this is what we're used to this is what we understand you know, if you love movies, if you love entertainment, if you love nature, the food, the fruits, the, the joy of life, the connections, the family, um, then these are the things that keep us in, in this trap system. And it, it possibly is a trap because once you then incarnate or you go through that tunnel to be in this system, then it's like you can't leave. So even my girlfriend was saying to me, you know, if anything happens to you, and I appear, don't come to me because that probably won't be me. And if you understand about lucid dreaming and like out body experiences, we can have these different characters in those worlds, in these dream states and other dimensions that will appear to be these dream characters. So for example, a teacher, a like a representative of astral experiences, a lucid dreaming teacher, um, you know, we can see them in, in our dream state because we fabricate our reality around us. It's like a consensus reality that we have fabricated that world around us, what we project, and those pe those beings that come through are most likely not our lucid dreaming teacher, for example, or someone we look highly up to. But it could be an ass. It could be another being which is disguising themselves as this teacher, for example. So they're saying that you know there are beings that. Do appear loved ones but it's, it's a false reality and those that have moved on or incarnated and left the trap for example then it's an aspect of them have come through that an entity is is using their identity to show themselves and saying hey 
come with me, take my hand, you know, you'll be safe. And then you're stuck in this, this trap. If it is a trap, I don't really know. I haven't experienced it myself, but things sort of make sense. Anyway, I'm going to um, read a two pages from her book. It's called Part Three, and it's called Jane and the Two Tunnels. I thought this was a lovely story. And this is on uh, page 31. So if you have this book already, feel free to read along with me. So, when Jane's mum called me, it was already too late. Jane was in the hospital and her condition was irrevocable. Jane's mum asked me to be there in spirit while she passed, passes. So this is Isabella being asked to be there in spirit. As I energetically entered the hospital room, I saw two beams of light and two sets of beings waiting for Jane's soul to come to her body. One being was dark blue and three dark blue colored beings were standing next to it. The beings were tall and thin and did not look human. The heads of the beings were oddly shaped and they had long robes on to cover their bodies. Their hands rep rep resembled the limbs of an insect. So quite insectoid beings, I guess, alien beings. One was taller than the other, two, and the other one had a device that reminded me of a smart glass, or like a clipboard. The beings gave off a nervous vibe. It had to do with the com competition for this soul that they were facing. On the other side of the room was another beam of light, of white light. Three very different beings were standing next to it. They glowed with impeccable, impeccable white light and had the typical an angelic look. Sorry if I can't say words properly, I'm a bit dyslexic. The beings had blonde hair and blue eyes and wore identical long white tunics. There were two men and one woman. These beings did not have any clipboards with them. They appeared laid back and confident in the choice the soul would make. When Jane came out of her body, she looked confused for a moment. Her soul stood between the two tunnels. Neither of the two beings tried to convince her. They allowed her to choose for herself. I stood there in spirit and watched while Jane's soul turned and floated into the tunnel of white light. The white tunnel f folded into itself. Jane and the three glowing beings were pulled into it and the spot where the tunnel was went dark. While watching that occurred, I missed what happened to the dark blue beam, beam and the tall blue beings. When I turned to look, the room was empty. These observations brought up additional questions for me. Are the inhabitants of other planets involved in Earth's reincarnation cycle, for example. Do other planets have reincarnation cycles of their own? So this experience, I believe, is that Isabella, she was able to come out of her body and assist in her friend Jane's passing. And she witnessed these two different tunnels. One of them were most likely really lovely beings that are able to take you into a more safer place that weren't part of this trap system. And the other one, the white light, they, they took her. And it's difficult because, um, you know, when we're faced with such opportunity and we've missed our loved ones, then we can get stuck in this trap again, I guess, if it is a trap. But it's our own choosing. It's not really a trap. It's if we choose to be here, it's our, it's our own free will. And she's also explained that in the book too, that, you know, when your time comes and you're faced with these two tunnels of, of light, like one blue, one white, and it's like you're choosing to not go to them at all. It's not that you can be trapped here as a ghost or a spirit. If you are a, if you are aware that you have died, if you're aware that you are an individual that is able to be more conscious and aware and a master of their own outer body and astral experiences, then you can completely uh, choose where you want to go in a way. So I hope that gives you a bit of insight. It's a, it's a very new concept to me. I'm getting my head around it and trying to understand. But once you understand that perhaps we are in this reincarnation trap, that these entities feed off of our fear and as above, so below and the governments, they're doing that also. They're probably part of the system. They're probably negotiating with these entities potentially. And Robert Monroe also experienced this in his book, uh, in, in his life, which he wrote in his book, uh, far journeys or ultimate journey, I can't remember which one. And he talks about the louche, and this is what it is. It's this energy that we create in the fear state that these entities feed off of. And yeah, very interesting. Um, so I'll leave it there for you. Um, take what you want, take what you believe, um, but it's about your own experience. And this is what 
is my journey, is about my own experience. I'm not saying that this is the truth, but it's good to be able aware of things in case it does happen and you're faced with it, and perhaps if you pass over. And I hope that if we do exit this cycle, this system, we are able to come back and visit our loved ones and come through and give messages because, you know, I've been experiencing seances, physical mediumship, trance, um, for example, for many years. And we have a lovely group here at the retreat center where we are having constant communication with our guides um, in the seance room, on our token table, and we've done a lot of rescues too. And now a part of me thinks that have we rescued those souls, all those hundreds of souls that have come through into back into the system? I don't know really, I have no idea, but it's a nice concept, really good book. It's a, a nice um, short book, a really easy to read too. Um, which some books I find a bit too complex, like why you don't need to put complex words in there. Keep it very simple for the readers to understand. But yeah, I really recommend this book uh, by Is it Isabella A. Green. Purchase it, have a read, and just expand your awareness on the knowledge of what's out there and what it could happen. And yeah, it's, it's an, an, another thing to point out just before I go is that Isabella has been mastering the outer body state and astral projection. Now she calls it quantum travel. So she's able to leave her body. And, and once you've mastered that too, is then you're able to be more free within your uh, selective choices of when you leave this system. Because you've had that teaching, you've had those experiences to be more aware in the, the dream worlds, in the astral worlds, in the in the locale one, two and three, which Robert Monroe talks about too, which is copies of this physical reality and beyond. So really good book, really recommend it. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care for now.